This is part two of our anatomical organization lesson. I wanted to separate them out because this is really a lot of terms before we learned terms but it was in relationship to different drawings that we would write. This is really a list of terms that I'm going to write out for us to cover in general without pictures. So let's first start with different regions. And I'm just going to go through a different a list of term of terms that explain different regions in the body and I'd like you to review them and make sure that you know what these terms mean so then you'll be able to we'll be able to kind of converse in this language of anatomy and be able to reference different things without losing each other okay so let's start out with a list of these terms The first region is cephalic, that just means head, facial, refers to the face. I'm going to kind of change colors based on what we're learning to help you follow along. The next one is cervical, which means neck, Thoracic means mid-back. Lumbar means low back. Oops, that should be a U. It's funny shaped. Lumbar means low back. Sacral, your sacrum is actually a bone in your pelvis that sits right below your lumbar spine so the sacrum is still technically part of the spine and it's just below your low back so that's what sacral means we also have clavicular That means the region around the clavicle or your collarbone. And all this, so basically this dark purple is related to your head. This is related to your spine and red. And the light purple is going to be related to your upper body or your arm more specifically. So we have the clavicular region. We have axillary, which refers to your armpit region. You have brachial, which refers to your arm. You have cubital, which means elbow. You have antibrachial, which means forearm. Carpal, which means wrist. And those are actually your carpal bones are actually your wrist bones. And then we also have the palmar surface and the dorsum. So we have the palmar and the dorsum of the hand. So that's all your upper body stuff. Now, in the center region, we have a few other things as well. We have the sternum, which is right in the center in between your ribs and the front. Pectoral is around where your pectoral muscles are, or your pecs as they're commonly known. Abdominal means your belly or stomach area. Now that's a little bit misleading because your stomach is actually like very superiorly or very high up in your, in your belly area. 
but abdominal is what we use for that whole commonly known as belly region. Pelvic is around your pelvis bones. Pubic is around the, so your pubic area is where genitals are found. Gluteal means around your butt or where your gluteal muscles are. Inguinal means in between your, almost kind of in between your belly and around your hip, the front of your hip area in between your belly and your thigh. So there's actually something called an inguinal ligament and that's what we refer to that area as inguinal. So definitely look that up so you can reference that. Now I'm going to move into using a different color and talk about some lower extremity things or legs. So for that you have your thigh, which is where your quadricep and like hamstring muscles are. Now oftentimes people ref will refer to their thigh above their knee and the area below their knee as your leg. But in anatomy, leg only means the area below the knee. And anything above the knee in your quote leg or lower extremity is your thigh. So just to clarify, if we're talking about your lower extremity, your thigh is above the knee, your leg is below the knee. Make sure you don't get those confused, okay? Then we also have the tarsal region, which just, tarsal just means ankle. You actually have a tarsal bone there. And then the last thing is pedal, which re refers to foot. And I always remember that because you press a gas pedal with your foot. And then you also have the dorsal, dorsum and plantar area of your foot. Now, plantar in your foot is analogous to palmer in your hand, okay? So this right here is the palm of my hand, and the bottom of my foot is the plantar surface of my foot. And then this is the dorsum of my hand, and same thing with your foot, the top of your foot is the dorsum. So that covers the different regions. Now let's kind of diff let's talk about the definition of organization. So for anatomical organization, we're going to talk about a few different things starting from the smallest to the largest structures that make up the organization of our bodies. So let's start with an atom. The atom is the smallest thing we can start with. And that's the most basic piece of organization. Then atoms can come together to form molecules. Those molecules will come together to form organelles. Organelles will come together to form cells. And cells are actually the smallest unit of life. Different cells will come together to form tissues. Those tissues will come together to form organs. Those organs will come together to form systems. And examples of those are like your digestive system, your cardiac system, having to do with your heart, or excuse me, your circulatory system, having to do with your heart and your blood and everything. And then 
all of your different systems form your body or the organism as a whole. Okay, so just keep this organization in mind as we go through anatomy. Now let's break these system down, systems down and review them so we kind of know what's coming because we're going to cover the different systems in our body. So we're going to start with the integumentary system, which just means skin. Then we're going to talk about the skeletal, which means your skeletal system is just your bones. Then the muscular system, which is your muscles. The nervous system, which is your brain and spinal cord and nerves. The endocrine system, which has to do with hormones. Then the circulatory system, which is also known as cardiovascular. which is just like I was talking about, that's one of our systems that has to do with the heart and all the blood vessels. Then our lymphatic system, which is closely tied to our immune system. Our respiratory system, which is for breathing. Our digestive system, which is food intake and then um, getting that food out of our system as well. Urinary system, which has to do with filtering fluids and helping us pee and eliminate things that we don't need. And then our last system is reproductive. So this is the order in which we will learn these systems of the body. And it'll be pretty easy to remember what the systems are because we will have covered all of them by the end of this course. So that wraps up the rest of our anatomical organization lecture. Make sure it's very important for you to know these terms and make sure that you'll be able to just, if you see carpal, you know exactly what that means, for example because we're going to be using these throughout the rest of the course and you have to be able to recognize these terms and know what region we're talking about, know how things are organized and know the different systems of anatomy.